um, be friends afterwards. You know what I mean? And if that's what he wants. For some reason, he's been challenging me for the last couple of years. I don't know why. I haven't done nothing to the guy. But I guess, you know, if a guy feels they can beat me, I give him the challenge. You know, this way, when he sees he can't, then he, he can say, well, I tried and I, I couldn't do it. Well, Davis versus McGirt, something to think about, but tonight it's Davis versus Edwin Curet, and there's the Superman making his way into the ring, led by co-managers Billy Giles and Tumblr Davis. Superman 34 and 1. He's had a couple of wins since the loss to Meldrick Taylor and the loss of the WBA welterweight title. There's Edwin Curet. Comes off the upset win over Glenwood, the real beast, Brown. A split decision, decision victory at the Paramount on September 17th. He has been around for 14 years as a pro. So we're set to go. 10 rounds, junior middleweights, Davis and Curet. For the formal introduction of the fighters, let's go up to ring announcer, Steady Eddie Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at the Paramount for this evening's main event. And is approved by the New York State Athletic Commission, the Honorable Randy Gordon Chairman. The judges, Harold Letterman, Nick Cimino, and Tony Castellano. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round junior middleweight bout, referee Arthur Mercanti Sr. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white trim. He tipped in at an even 153 pounds. This fine gentleman professionally has 28 wins, 13 losses, two draws with 11 knockouts from Boston, Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the Big Apple, Edwin Couret. Couret. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the red and blue sequin colored trim trucks. He weighed in at even 155 pounds. Professionally, he has 34 wins, only one loss, with 21 knockouts. The former WBA Rollerweight Champion, and now is currently ranked number one by the WBA and number two by the WBC. From the Bronx, New York, boxing fans, here is Aaron Superman Davis. Davis. Gentlemen, you both know the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. You obey these rules and I'll enforce them. Shake hands now. Good luck to both of you. And the rules are scoring done in a 10-point must system. Standing eight count in effect. Three knockdown rule in effect. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Here we go. Schedule for 10. Superman Davis in the sequin red trunks. And Curette in the straight red trunks with the white trim. And Curette comes winging out of his corner. And Bruce Curette is, is, is basically a survivor. He knows how to survive. He knows how to kill a clock. But if you, he's really cute. Unless you keep busy and keep on this guy, he can steal rounds because he'll look like he's going to do nothing. And then all of a sudden, he'll throw a little flurry. And it may be enough to win a round. Well, the other question in this fight is what about the motivation of Davis, who seems to get up for the bigger fights a lot more than he does some of the others? Well, I, I think he realizes how important this is to him because he's in a position uh, where he's going to have to get a world title shot, politics or not, if, again, if he wins this fight. And that would be against Julio Cesar Vasquez of Argentina. And I think that uh, Edwin Curet must have uh, looked at a film of Davis's fight with Cummings because in the first minute of the fight, uh, Davis was nailed and looked like he was in serious trouble. And again, Curet came out winging punches, which is not his style. And there's a solid left by Curet, a little bit of an uppercut. You're gonna see a lot of uppercuts because he's four inches smaller than Davis. Davis is seven years younger than Curet. Davis's last fight, October 15th, the TKO7 win over Craig Cummings. 
Durant's last fight, as we mentioned, September 17th. Superman Davis did go 13 months without a fight after losing to Meldrick Taylor. Remember, he suffered a serious thumb injury in that fight in the second round. So it took him a while to get that injury together. He pulled a little bit of a Rip Van Winkle for a while. No one knew if he was motivated. Now he's had two fights Stop since holding, then. Holding. Well, again, we, we hope he's back in the groove because he has the talent to become world champion again. And he's still young. Good left hand by Superman Davis. Backing Curet up on that one. I don't think that was as, as an effective punch as it looked, Bruce. I think that Curet's uh, feet got tangled in the canvas a little bit. Davis looks pretty focused for this first round. And the first one is in the books as we go to the corner of Aaron Davis. His dad, Tumbler Davis, and Billy Giles at the controls. Don't wing your right hand. On the other side, where's the bucket? Joe Lake, manager trainer of Edwin Curet. Nah, that boy. Come on, one more. Keep your hands up. That's all. Somebody's calling. Yo, let's take a look at that punch. Right, let's, let's take a look at exactly what happened. Well, he got nailed pretty, pretty good, uh, Bruce, but his feet were not in a proper position. Second round, scheduled for 10. There's one of those typical, typical curette, uh, Flurries that he tries to win rounds with, but usually he saves them for the end of the round. Instead, he's coming out early in each round and throwing those punches. All right, break! Break! break, step back. Again, Curet may not get away with as much as he uh, right, has in previous break. fights because they have a real astute referee in there, and Arthur McCanty. There he goes, he's warning him. Let's go. He's not going to allow that to happen. That's, and that's one of Curet's favorite things, is to hold and kill the clock. And that means Davis, with the punching power, can do some work. Absolutely. And a good double jab by Davis, and that's what his corner said to do. Billy Giles said, start with the jab, do everything off the jab. I know you like that kind of talk. Absolutely. Besides the obvious height advantage, Davis just looks like the bigger, stronger, more physical guy. Well, he fought most of his career as a 139, 135 pounder. So this is really not a natural weight for him. All right, break! This is Davis's third fight as a junior middleweight. And he says he's comfortable here at 154. He said he was a 147 pounder for too many years. Davis hit Curet low and Curet hit him low right back. One for one. And a warning to Curet from Mercanti to watch the low blows, not to Davis. Davis chopping away at the body. Good double left by Davis. Good left hook to the body by Davis. Thirty seconds in the second. Davis, the aggressor with the combination, and backing Curet up. Another double left that scored. Strong 
round for Davis. Something to drink, sir? Uh, yeah. There's the Raging Bull, Jake LaMotta at ringside Gill taking in the action. Great fighter, Bruce. He was absolutely a great, great fighter. And well liked also. You know, a lot of people thought that Rick, Jake LaMotta was just a brawler, but believe me, he could box. He knew his way around the ring. This is the third round scheduled for 10. Aaron Davis, red sequin trunks with the blue trim. Edwin Curette, red trunks with the white trim. Stop right, stop right. Davis is showing his strength as he backs his opponent into the ropes. And you know, if they take your Curette's the tricks of holding and walking the guy around away from him, that's taking half of Curette's fight away because uh, what else can he do with the biggest, stronger guy? Canty steps in to separate the fighters. Direct goes to the body, but upstairs goes Davis authoritatively. And Davis just looked so much bigger and stronger than Curet. Davis looks extremely focused. He has been efficient in this fight. <laughs> And he's doubling up with the jam, and down goes Curet. Mercanti sends him to a neutral corner. And it's been the doubling up of Davis's punches that has been effective. countering a bit, but it's Davis's punches which are really scoring with power. Those short. Back he goes again. Second knockdown in the round. Remember, three knockdown rule is in effect. So if Curet goes down one more time, this one's over, and it's over now. Arthur Mercanti is stopping this one in the third round. I think that uh, Curet himself stopped the fight. I don't think it was Arthur McCanty. I think he just uh, refused to continue. He did not look like he had it right from the beginning, Curet. No, he just didn't belong in there with Aaron Superman. And he's the guy that's gone the distance with Buddy McGurn and Livingstone Bramble and Greg Haugen and Louis Lamelli. But tonight, right from the beginning, it did not look like he was going anywhere. Is James Buddy McGurn maybe taking some notes about a future date somewhere with Aaron Davis? This is the fight Davis has to feel real good about, Gil. Oh, I would say so. Compared to the Glenwood Brown's performance against the same guy. Davis would appear to have a date with Julio Cesar Vasquez of Argentina. Here's the first knockdown. Just a couple of jabs. Here's the second one, Gil. And it didn't look like he had all that much on those punches, but Charret went down both times. And then the referee stepped in and that was it. All right. So Aaron Superman Davis improves to 35 and one. And Ed Darian will give us the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Arthur Mercanti Sr. stops this bout at two minutes and 12 seconds of the third round, and a winner by a TKO, Aaron Superman Davis. Davis, and have a nice round of applause for Edwin Cudet. Let's hear it for him. Maestro, if you will, please. Sure, it really didn't look like he was willing to continue in this bout. Davis looked a lot stronger. So the Superman on his way to a title shot in the spring. It would appear that way, and we'll be back.